Velvet Deck is not a game I expected to find, let alone play. I came upon it late at night, trolling around on the internet when I should have been sleeping, by the way of a trailer from December 11th, 2023, announcing that the game was set to release on February 2nd, 2024, or sometime thereafter. Though just over two minutes long, I was almost immediately enamored by the graphical style and promise of a JRPG set in late medieval Central Europe with a dash of Disco Elysium's basic plot structure, and that you play as a drunken, loveless man trying to find his lost love and purpose. When I jumped on Steam to ascertain when or if the game had indeed launched, I was happy to discover that it had been out for just a couple days, releasing on March 29th, 2024. And at just $11, well, I opened my wallet, downloaded the game, and the rest, as they say, is history. Although I planned on reviewing another game before this, I have no self-control and simply couldn't help myself. Hope you can forgive me as today we explore this truly unique little gem. Felvedek, as I said, is a JRPG produced and published by one Josef Pavelka, or Brozef, as he goes online. Brozef, so far as I can tell based on a cursory search, is an illustration student based in Prague and the sole creator of the game, which in and of itself is wildly impressive. You play as Pavel, a 15th century Slovakian knight and veteran of what sounded to me like the Crusade of Varna against the Ottomans, because of the frequent mention of the dreaded Turks, but also because near the end of the game one of the ending slides you can get sets the events around 1451, or eight years after the Crusade of Varna. Pavel, or Pauli, as some call him has come to Felvedek in the castle of Lord Yosef in search of his estranged wife, Paula, who players will shortly discover is involved in something far more sinister than running out on her marriage and sleeping with random strangers, but has instead joined a strange cult who aims to turn people into weird monsters with the use of devilish purple seeds. Not a good look. Now for context, Felvedek is actually a really interesting and fitting choice for the game's name. It translates basically to Upper Hungary and is an older term used to describe the territory now containing most of what is modern Slovakia. Anyway, the game opens with Pavel, delirious with one of the many drinks he's used to drown out his recent woes when he is suddenly jolted to life by a fire bursting from a nearby castle. Sticking of ammonia and booze, Pavel rushes once the player realizes they should move him following the brief cutscene from his room to find Lord Yosef waiting with instructions to go over to the castle and figure out what the hell is going on. Yosef also offers the local monk, Matej, as a companion who, while reluctant, will come to be both the player's conscience and eventual friend along their heroic and often chaotic journey. Again, a Disco Elysium example, he's basically the Kim to your Harry. The first thing players may notice about Felvedek, aside from its vision, visual style, which I admittedly loved and lends itself to a wonderful old school feel, is, well, there's no tutorial. In truth, while it won't take you long to fumble your way through its simplistic controls, it can be a little jarring to be thrust into any world without so much as a, oh by the way, this is how this works. Movements are performed with either Wasad or the directional keys, and actions are done with the E or space key. The menu can be accessed with the escape button, and sprinting is done with shift, which is pretty much all the controls, but I didn't figure out that last one until about two hours in, despite the fact that the trailer showcased that you can sprint, proving once again, I am no rocket scientist. While admittedly there are some vague hints periodically about some of the game's features, it's mostly up to the player to pay attention and figure things out in-game as they go. This goes for everything from picking up items to questing and combat. That said, I actually found this approach reminiscent of earlier games of the same style, which Velvedek obviously seeks to emulate. The same can be said about its diluted but still beautiful PS1 style graphics, which I'll touch on in a little bit. What follows upon leaving Yosef's castle for the other castle is a short, and I mean like four to six hours short, depending on if you get stuck or not, story of friendship, tragedy, hilarity, and hopefully triumph, although personally I found the ending a bit bittersweet. I'm being intentionally vague here because while I think the story of Felvedek does deserve to be praised for its gradual buildup of twists and turns, which did keep me hooked to the point I finished it in a single afternoon, it's also so short that I worry saying anything beyond the basic premise would spoil the experience for would-be players. While I know that may harm this review to a small degree, I feel I'd be doing you a disservice by not letting you experience those surprises for yourself. I want this to be a review, not a giant spoiler, and while you will see some late game imagery on screen from time to time, without context you probably won't feel spoiled because you won't really understand what's happening and you might not even understand at the time. That said, the story isn't perfect, it gets a little wordy in an attempt to be overly complex around the two-third point, but those looking for something to compare it to can look to the original Thief of the Dark project, as I feel the story had a similar, oh, it's getting weirder again, narrative structure. For an $11 game, while it might not be hitting the dollar per hour threshold, I think the story is worth the low price of entry alone. And before we move on to the rest of the game's core elements, which I'm sure you want to hear, I will conclude this part by saying I thought Felvedek did an excellent job of balancing the very real, very sad prospect of being this veteran knight Pavel character as he searches for his wife with the hilarious banter and escapades of Matej and Pavel as they try to uncover the sinister plot of her associates. Now, as I said, the controls for Felvedek are very basic, and anyone familiar with JRPGs or old RPGs in general are going to immediately recognize its inventory system, with dedicated submenus for looking and equipping items you've acquired along your journey, be they for healing or upgrades, as well as the combat, which uses a first-person party-based window similar to old JRPGs or dungeon crawlers, which the game admittedly builds itself as. Now, combat is very straightforward. You can attack, use a skill, or feints, 
as they are known in game, guard or use an inventory item ranging from a heal to a revive or a stick of dynamite. Faints are acquired via items or by your class, which is predetermined to the character, and range from stunning an enemy, healing your party, or literally pulling out a gun and shooting them, although this will force you to skip a turn while you reload. In combat, you have two resources to manage, life and tools. Life being, well, it's your HP. If it runs out, you die and you have to reload. Pretty simple. Saving is done automatically, but I recommend manually saving often too, because it doesn't save that often and you never know when you'll want to maybe reload a part because you messed up or you died and now you have to backtrack for 30 minutes. Tools on the other hand are basically skill points or mana. If you run out or have too little, you can't use feints and can only use normal attacks. These can both be replenished by items or by praying at an altar. There are also status effects. These were next to never an issue for me, so I can't really speak on them that much. Guard, before I forget, just increases your defense, so I never really use it. Why defend when you can just hit them harder again? You know what I'm saying? Combat, which could have easily gotten tiresome given its older style and its limited amount of skills, is made interesting by all the unique animations and sounds for the different attacks and abilities. Sound in general is, in my opinion, a highlight in this game. And this coupled with a wide variety of enemy sprites and backgrounds depending on the area you're fighting made each encounter feel rewarding and worth doing. The killer combat OST also gives you real incentives to seek violence whenever possible, or maybe it's just me. And you want to fight things not only because it's fun and progresses the story, but also because of the rewards which allow you to upgrade your equipment by consumables with the money you earn, which I promise you will need, as while I wouldn't call Felvedek difficult, it certainly doesn't pull any punches. I mean within my first 10 minutes with the game, I was tricked by a cultist in the basement of Yosef's castle into following him, whereupon I was immediately jumped by a group of them in a shed out back and killed. Rough stuff. A lot of your time in Felvedek outside of combat is spent, well, traversing the world and completing quests for either the story or your own personal interests, which there's not as many of the latter, but there are some interesting ones. But all of these have no log. If you're someone who easily forgets, I recommend writing things down. Exploring and simply talking to the townsfolk can often get you out of confusing spots and can be fun in its own right, with each character having a little blurb and their own unique face, which gives a lot of character to what can outwardly appear to be a drab world. But Felvedek is not going to hold your hand story-wise, and if you don't pay attention as a character pontificates on the current situation, you may end up a little lost by the end. Not saying it's some philosophical marvel or anything, but you know, if you read, you might enjoy the story a little more. Traversing the world, something you'll be doing a lot of, as I said, is done with a fixed overhead camera system, like a CRPG more or less. Although buildings do not go transparent, you have to enter them manually one by one. The overworld is done in a JRPG style where players can go from major locations on an overworld before entering into them and exploring them with more detail. It's a simple system, it's easy to understand, familiar to those who have played J or older RPGs before and is well realized. Well, mostly. As I said previously, I didn't know you could hold shift to sprint until about two thirds of the way into the game, which would have been nice to know as you'll be going back and forth in this world a lot. Then again, I didn't necessarily mind walking around because one, I didn't know, and because each place feels unique and I never felt like I was going somewhere that wasn't handcrafted or worth the trip. I will say, I believe the graphics in this game are mostly hand painted. I also want to highlight the wonderful 3D cutscenes that are sort of sprinkled throughout the game. You don't get very many of these and I wish there were more, but I loved these. They were definitely the highlight of the experience for me. I think that they did an excellent job of realizing these and making them look authentic. I think it says a lot also that a game that is essentially just brown, gray, black, green, white, and purple can look so good and read as clearly as it does. A credit to Brozov's artistic background. And this nice appearance is only enhanced by the soundtrack, which again I have to come back to because it gives the game both a stellar brooding atmosphere in places like deep forests, but also some head thumping bangers like in combat as I said, or the tavern. I mean listen to this. Come on, dude, that rips. Marcel Godot's Holy Crab, the group responsible for the soundtrack, does an excellent job of fitting the atmosphere and tone with each accompanying song. And while the set list is relatively small, it is used either sparingly enough or effectively enough to where I never got tired of the repetition personally. And truthfully, there isn't a lot more I can say without risking story spoilers, because this game isn't very long, as I said. But it is a game I think everyone should try. It's fun, it's affordable at just $11 US, and it's a unique take on the JRPG in a way that I think breathes that fresh old school life back into the genre. I can't remember the last time I hardlined any 
game from front to back in an afternoon. And for a game I discovered on accident thanks to the trailer popping up in my algorithm a week ago, I am eternally grateful to Random Chance for giving me the opportunity to try it. I have not heard anybody talking about this, and it has very few recommendations on Steam, so if you do end up playing it, please give it a little review so that more people can discover it. I hope that me talking about this game has gotten you interested in it, and I hope that you give it a shot. I think it's going to be worth your time. But that is going to be it for me. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I am still doing my Lunison review, as I mentioned on the channel, as was voted for on the channel. That should be coming out sometime in May or early June. I just have to, you know, play the game. And yeah, that's it for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Sol. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. You can consider becoming a channel member also if you like. And if not, I appreciate your time, and I will happily see you in the next one.